How would you like to learn a little known unique forehand tip that's going to make your forehand more effortless, smoother, and more consistent under pressure? Well, I learned this by studying one of the best forehands in the world, and I'm really excited to bring you this lesson today. My name is Jeff Salzenstein, founder of Tennis Evolution and former top 100 ATP professional. And as a USTA high performance coach, I am committed to helping players all over the world take their forehands and their tennis games to the next level. I don't care if you're a beginner, if you're an intermediate or a pro, I'm going to help you. I'm going to give you tips that are going to make a big difference in your game. And today we're going to talk about a forehand that was very unorthodox and unique. And not many people really noticed what this player did, but I'm going to reveal it all today. So let's get right to it. His name is Guillermo Coria, and he is from Argentina. Now, when I was playing on the tour, I started playing professional tennis in 1996 after I graduated from Stanford. And when I was playing on the tour, there was a whole squadron of Argentinian players playing on the clay, dominating the clay, and even doing well on the hard courts. Now, Bandian and Coria and many others that I'm not going to go into right now. But I started studying these players, not only American players and European players, but I wanted to study what the best Argentinians were doing. And there was this little guy named, well, he's not that little, but a little guy compared to other pro players, Guillermo Coria, who was just tearing up the clay court circuit, particularly between 2003 and 2005. So I was a good seven years on the tour, and I was trying to unlock secrets that I hadn't learned earlier. I wish I had. And I'm studying this guy, and he's just ripping forehands. He's moving all over the court like a mosquito. In fact, he got to the finals of the French Open and had match points against another Argentinian, Gaston Gaudio, and he choked that match away. And honestly, he was never the same. He did have a great match against Rafa Nadal in 2005 in Italy, in Rome in the Master Series in Rome. He lost 7-6 in the fifth set when they used to play three out of five. And he was an absolute machine, but his career was never the same after he lost that French Open final and after he lost in a doll in 2005. However, there was a stretch for a few years where he was the king of clay. Now, I have to set the stage there because people don't think of this guy as having a big forehand, but it was consistent. It was well-placed. It was disguised. It was smooth. It was effortless. And to be honest, my forehand was in and out. Some days it was good, some days it wasn't that great. And I know you might be watching this lesson going, hey, that sounds like me. Some days my forehand's good and some days it's not. So I was looking for more consistency and I started noticing a specific way that Coria swung on his forehand and I brought it into my proprietary tennis evolution system to help players. And what he did is when he swung, first of all, he had a semi-Western grip but when he swung, at the end of his swing, he finished lower, and he finished basically with his fingers holding the throat of the racket like this. And this is gonna really probably upset a few players and a few coaches today when they see this lesson. They're gonna disagree with me. They're gonna think that I'm crazy. But I'm telling you that in the heat of battle, when I copied the Guillermo Coria forehand, it worked for me. And then when I showed it to some players that were willing to adopt this method, their forehands got better. The problem is that a lot of people aren't willing to do this. They're not willing to practice it, and that's okay, but I know that it works if they give it a try. So when you swing, at the end of the swing, you wanna practice finishing with the racket tip down like this and with the fingers in the throat of the racket. Now, why do we do this? I believe that when you swing like this, it allows you to create more of a circular swing path ar around the body and that creates a smoothness that we want. So a lot of people, a lot of players and coaches talk about getting racket head speed and racket head acceleration, but I really want ball control first. And you can sw see that slow swing that I just did. This is what Guillermo Corey did. He turned his hand over like that. You see the racket turns over. It turns over like this, and then, and then he finishes in this position. Now, when I show players how to do this, a lot of times they don't get in that position. They swing and they maybe finish here and are too cramped and close to the body. So this is why it's important to catch it in the, in the throat like this because it creates space. We wanna create more time and space in tennis. And in this case, we're talking about space. And so again, if your problem, if the problem that you have with your forehand is it's not smooth, 
it's inconsistent, you don't feel like you have ball control, it's hit or miss, you might want to try this out. Again, think if you go and YouTube Guillermo Correa, you're going to see that when he swings, here I'll take this ball out, when he swings, you'll see this repeatable swing every single time. Now, if you have an eastern grip and you swing like this, the racket's actually going to lay flat like this. You're not going to be able to turn it over. That's going to make it weird, okay? So it's not going to work. So this definitely works more for a semi-western grip at the end, and you'll notice that the strings are facing in this direction. If I have an eastern grip, then the strings are going to face down like this. So I'll demonstrate an eastern grip here. So if I swing, I finish more in this position, okay? If I have a semi-western or western, I'm going to turn the racket over like this. I would say this is the updated 2.0 version of the windshield wiper forehand. And this is what Guillermo Coria did. He had his own style. Now, if you've seen any other videos that I've done on the forehand, I'm a big proponent of swinging low to high because I believe it promotes extension, uh, a low to high finish. But again, if you want to adopt more variety into your forehand, if you want to have more ball control, if you want to hit more angles, fun angles, then you might want to try swinging and finishing like this. Now, players and coaches might ask me, well, why do you have to catch the racket? I can just turn the hand like this, right? Sure, you can do that. You can do that and it can work. The problem that I find when people don't catch the racket is there's too much tension in the shoulder and in the hand. So if I'm able to lay the racket in the throat at the very end, I can actually relax my hand a little bit and my shoulder. Now make sure when you do this, when you swing, you don't lift your shoulder like this. This is a common problem that I see players make is that when they swing, they, they do this or they do this. This shoulder lifts, that's tension. So we wanna keep this shoulder down when we swing. Okay, and we're in this position. It's also easier to swing this way when you're in an open stance. So when you, when you finish, it's easier to be in this position right here than stepping in and going like this. So this is what makes Tennis Evolution so unique is that we're able to break down different types of forehands, different types of swings that you should use in different situations. And again, if you're hitting a lot of open stance forehands, if you want ball control, if you want more of a circular extended swing path, you might want to copy Guillermo Coria. Again, this guy won everything on clay from 2003 to 2005, just about everything. This is the, before the golden era of Nadal and Federer and Djokovic dominating. This is, Guillermo Coria was one of the best in the world on clay and I was so fortunate, I actually had a chance to practice with him in Australia. He was starting to go down, he was starting to get the yips on his serve but I had a chance to practice with him and feel that forehand. And I know there were many times in matches when I was tight and I was nervous and I just practiced swinging like this and all of a sudden the ball started arcing. I started creating more spin. I had more control. I could hit angles. I had more time. I particularly like to use this forehand when I move inside the court. So if I'm coming up for an approach shot, if I hit an approach, I can finish down here and then run forward afterwards. That's a great time to use the hand turn. Another time to use it is when you're running wide and you wanna play the ball down the line. This is a great time to use it, okay? Now you wanna make sure, again, that it looks like this when you're done, if you have a semi-western or if you have an eastern. A lot of people do this and they, they, what, they break the wrist. And we don't, this is kind of like the windshield wiper that people teach. We don't want the wrist to break, so make sure you're not doing that. Make sure the wrist is relaxed and at least neutral at the end. So hopefully you enjoyed this lesson, this Guillermo Coria special lesson. I wanted to bring it out today because it's an advanced tip, but it's one that can give you that smoothness that you're looking for, that ball control, that consistency. And if you want some variety away from always going over the shoulder, you might want to consider adding this dimension to your forehand. Now, if you enjoyed this lesson, make sure that you're subscribed and that your notifications are turned on so you can be updated with future lessons we'll be delivering at Tennis Evolution. Give us a thumbs up as well, and please share our channel with others. We are passionate about helping players of all levels, and we believe we can. It doesn't matter what level you are, we've got the tips to help. But more importantly today, I've got a free gift that I wanna to share with you today. 
there are three forehand myths that many players are making and many coaches are actually perpetuating. We got to change this and I'm committed to doing so. And so in order to learn the three myths, this free gift, because you took the time to watch this entire lesson, I want you to click the link in the description below or somewhere in this video. We'll take you to the next page where you can sign up to get the three forehand myths. It's absolutely free today. It's the gift that I want to give to you for being passionate and taking the time. Now, many players are going to watch this video and just walk away and not do anything about it. But those that are passionate and want to improve and want to keep making progress are going to take the next step. Are you going to be that person? Click the link in the description below to get the three forehand myths along with the solutions. I'm all about solutions. I'm going to show you the myths and the mistakes that are being made out there. And again, it's probably not your fault, but I'm also going to give you the solution so that you can transform your forehand into a weapon. I really enjoyed bringing this lesson to you today. We want to keep helping you guys get better out there and gals too. Thanks so much for your time today. We'll see you at the next lesson.